How you doing guys? Welcome to another video. This is still topic 7.1, equilibrium, and in this one, we're looking at the equilibrium constant. Let's go. Okay, topic 7.1, what is the equilibrium constant Kc? We look at the meaning of Kc values, we learn how to write a Kc expression, and then we talk about the reaction quotient. The IB understandings focus around this equilibrium law and this Kc value, and we need to talk about reaction quotient and how that fits, fits in with the Kc value. We might be asked to write the Kc expression, and then we might be able to determine the relationship between Kc and the reaction quotient. Okay, so if we have an equation where we have a to, end to, its, to the power of its coefficients, and we have b with its coefficient and the equilibrium arrows in the middle, we have what it would be an equilibrium expression. Now the equilibrium law or the equilibrium constant is equal to the concentration of the products to the power of their coefficients divided by the concentration of the reactants to the power of their coefficients. So Kc is equal to the concentration of C to its coefficient, which is little c, concentration of d to the power of its coefficient, little d. But you can just think of it as the concentration of the products to the power of their coefficients over the concentrations of the reactants. Now the process of determine this, determining this equilibrium constant is known as the reaction quotient, and Kc has a constant value at equilibrium. So it is a constant. The equilibrium constant, it doesn't change. The system adjusts to keep the system in equilibrium. So it will either move to the left to balance out something or move to the right to balance out something. Kc is a constant, so it doesn't change. Now the equilibrium constant is temperature dependent, meaning the only thing that can alter the value is a change in temperature. So here's an example. We have carbonyl chloride, which was called phosgene, which was used in World War I as a chemical agent. We've been given some concentrations and we've been given the reaction. It's got the equilibrium arrows, so it's, we know it's an equilibrium system. So to write the equilibrium constant Kc, we take the concentration of the products to the power of their coefficients and divide it by the concentration of the reactants to the power of its coefficients. So here the powers are all 1, the coefficients are 1, so we can simply sub in the numbers to determine the Kc value. So in this case, we have our concentration 0.14 over 1.2 times 10 to the minus 2 times 0 0.04554. And that gives us an equilibrium constant of 216. Now we've also got to be careful with the, the units because the units can change. So just think, we've got molar at the top over molar times molar. So that's m over m squared. So we need to write this as 1 over m squared if we do some cancelling out or the, as the IB might like to write it, they might like to write it in terms of mole per decimeter cubed. So if we were asked to write this in mole per decimeter cubed, it's gonna look a little bit weird, so we've gotta make sure we get that right. It would, it'll be mole to the minus one, and then dm cubed. That will be our units for this equilibrium constant, and they can change. Okay, so what does the equilibrium constant mean? And students don't often pay enough attention to what the value actually tells them. So for k values that are greater than 1, or much, much greater than 1, there will be a large concentration of products and a very small amount of reactants. And we can say that the reaction almost goes to completion. So here's a reaction where the Kc value is 1.03 times 10 to the 12. That's a very big k value, which means most of the mixture will be the reactants. There'll be only a very, very small amount of products remaining, and we say that the equilibrium is lying very much to the right. There's a lot more SO3 than there is SO2 and O2. That's for a very large K value. If we have a K value that is very small or less than one, or much, much less than one, the equilibrium is said to consist mainly of the reactants. And we only have a small proportion of the products. And when we talk about the preceding reaction, we say that it hardly proceeds. It's, it's not really reacting very much. So we've all studied weak acids, and we know that a weak acid only partially ionizes, and we know that that means that there's a lot of molecules in the solution and not many of the ions. So for instance, ethanoic acid has a very low K value, which means there's a lot of ethanoic acid molecules and only a very small concentration of H plus and ethanoate ions. 
So in that system, there's a large concentration of the acid molecules and only a very small concentration of H plus ions. If we're looking at that reaction, we would say that the equilibrium lies to the left because there's a large amount of reactants and not many of the products. Now we have overall a spectrum, a continuum for K values. If the K is very small, we say that, that is, there's a larger concentration of the reactants and it hardly proceeds. If we've got one, well that's sitting right in the middle. That's about 50% of both. And if we have a very large K value, we have a large amount of products or the system is lying a lot to the right. So we know that chemical equilibrium is a reversible reaction where the concentration of the reactants and products remain constant over time. But initially when we start a reaction, we might put in different concentrations of our reactants and products and the system will try and adjust to establish an equilibrium. So if we have a certain amount of a certain concentration of reactants and we place those into a closed vessel, then the system is going to try and establish an equilibrium. That may mean that the forward or reverse reaction needs to occur. To work out if the system is, is at equilibrium or it does need to be either a forward or reverse reaction, we do what we call the reaction quotient. That's where we work out the equilibrium law and we sub in the values for our, re our concentrations that we've been given and we need to see if it equals the K value. So the KC value for this reaction would be PCl3 multiplied by Cl2 over PCl5. So what we need to do here is to work out which ones of these systems are at equilibrium. So we need to go through and sub in all of the values for the different concentrations to determine if equilibrium has been reached or something needs to occur to form equilibrium. So for the first one, our reaction quotient is 0.4. For B, it's 0.11. For C, 0.4 again. And for D, 0.4. So what we can see here is for A, C and D, we've got a system that is in equilibrium. Okay, those three concentrations, they're all the same. They've, they've formed the same reaction quotient. So that is at equilibrium. Reaction flask B, well, that one is actually lower than 0.4. So that one is not at equilibrium. So what needs to happen here for this system to be at equilibrium? Well, the K value's got to get bigger. The only way the K value can get bigger is if the concentration of the reactants gets smaller. So it's too big at the moment. So what needs to happen is it needs to get smaller. So that means that the equilibrium position is to the left. It's sitting too much in the favor of the reactants. So for this system to form an equilibrium, some of those reactants are going to need to react to form the products. So we say that it will shift to the right to establish equilibrium. So the reaction quotient Q, which we just had a, an experiment with, is the substitution of the concentrations of the reactants and products at some specific point and in time. If the Q value does not equal the equilibrium constant, we know it's not at equilibrium and something must happen to balance that equilibrium. So the equilibrium constant for the N2O4 and the NO2 that we studied in the last video is 4.5. So if we're given some moles, and we're also given the volume of the vessel, we can work out if the system is at equilibrium. So the K value for this system would be NO2 squared because there's a two as the coefficient over N2O4. Now we can only use concentrations for an equilibrium constant. In this question, they gave us mole. So we've got to work out the concentration by doing mole over volume. So the N2O4 would be 0.2 over two liters, which is 0.1. And then the N2O4, or the NO2, we've got to do the same way. So we would do mole over volume, which is 0.3 over 2, which is 0.15. Now we're in a position to sub our numbers into our equilibrium constant. So it would be 0.15 squared because of the coefficient divided by 0.1. That gives us a value of 0 0.23 molar. So that means that our system is less than the K value. The Q value that we just determined does not equal KC. So this particular reaction at this point in time is not at equilibrium. 
So what must happen for this to form an equilibrium? Well, the Q is too low. So that means that our N204 is too big. The number down the bottom, it's too large. It's making this Q value too small. So the only way that this system can get to equilibrium is if the N204 reacts to form the NO2. So the equilibrium is lying to the left, and for the equilibrium to be established, we would need to have a forward reaction occurring. For the forward reaction to occur, the N204 must react to form NO2, and then that way the equilibrium will be re-established as the concentration of NO2 increases. Whenever you say something like the forward reaction must occur, it's really good practice to write what that reaction is. So N2O4 needs to react to form NO2 to form an equilibrium. That's called a net forward reaction. The KC value can also be manipulated by changing the stoichiometric coefficients in the balanced chemical equation. Also, they could reverse the reaction. So here's a reaction where we're given the KC value and they do a number of things. The first thing they might do is they will reverse the reaction. Now, if you reverse a chemical equilibrium, then that is one over the KC value or the inverse of the K value. So for this one, we would have one over KC, which would be one over 1 1.6 times 10 to the minus five. And that would be our new K value for the reverse reaction. It's the inverse of the K constant. If we have a very small number, we expect the inverse to be quite a large number. And in this case, it is. If we double the stoichiometric coefficients, what we're essentially doing is squaring the K value. So anytime that the stoichiometric coefficients are doubled, we need to square our K value. So here we would have 1.6 times 10 to the minus five squared, and our new KC value would be 2.56 times 10 to the minus 10. If they halve the stoichiometric coefficients, what we would need to do here is to take the square root of the K value. So halving the stoichiometric coefficients is square rooting that KC value. So the square root of 1.6 times 10 to the minus 5 would be 0 0.004 molar. All right, what if they do a combination of these things? The inverse and they double the coefficient. So if they look at the inverse, then what we're doing is we're doing one over the KC value. And then we're doubling the coefficients, so we're going to need to square that KC value. So essentially we've got one over KC squared. So our new K value would be equal to one over KC squared, and we could work that out by subbing that into our calculator. 1 over 1.65 times 10 to the minus 5 squared. Okay, topic 7.1, some top tips. Look for the equilibrium arrows. That's how you know it's an equilibrium system. And look at what the KC value tells you. And remember, KC is a constant at any temperature and it's only affected by a change in temperature. Thanks for watching, guys. Don't forget, drop a like on the video, subscribe for more, and I'll see you next time.